Hello, I'm Joseph Kassa, and I'm going to do this presentation on is there value in Inkosi? And the answer is briefly yes, but it's not what they tell you it is. So let's take a look at Inkosi from the perspectives perimeter, looking at it from the holistic thinking perspectives, external, which is the big picture, operational perspective, what it does, internal perspective, the functions it does, its organization structure, progressive perspectives, that's the generic, continuum, and temporal, and the remaining quantitative and scientific perspectives. And when you look at systems engineering, or when you look at INCOSI from the perspectives perimeter, you see some interesting results. So where's the value in INCOSI? Well, first of all, there's no systems engineering in INCOSI. There is a lack of systems thinking. Inkosi's own internal projects don't follow a systems engineering process. The annual Inkosi International Symposia do not advance the state of the discipline of systems engineering. And the Inkosi working groups don't produce anything useful to the real world. So let's take a look at lack of systems engineering. First of all, projects and pro products. Well, take a look at the Inkosi handbook. It's very narrow, focused on the B paradigm of systems engineering, which is basically flawed. And it's very wide, based on the role of what a systems engineer does. And since that is whatever the boss tells him to do, it's impossible to capture it all. Look at certification. CSEP provides a very minimum, narrow focus qualification. Basically, what's in the handbook. ESEP is better, and that's sort of based on experience, but if you want recognition out in the real world, the non incosi Chartered Engineer is even better. Look at the competency model. There are two fundamental flaws in it. It's nonlinear in that the evaluation scale is not in the same range. The bottom level applies to a totally different audience than the remaining levels, and it's based on observations of what people do. So you cannot check whether it's complete. The website is totally user unfriendly. I can't find anything. I can't figure out how to get access to anything. Things I used to have on the old website, I can't do. Can't enter the, the bulletin boards, discussion groups anymore. And as a webmaster, when I'm trying to, I can't update the chapter web page to put an announcement on. I don't want to learn how to use that whole software and become an expert in it. I just want to take 30 seconds to upgrade the chapter website, and I can't do that. The dialing meeting software didn't work with Macs. There's a large percentage of systems engineers, members of INCOSI, who use Macs, and they were locked out of the meetings. Still not sure if it works well. Bookcase and Gracie in education. There are few at Rick said that there were f few, if any, users in 2015. This was a predictable outcome in 2009. And yet, when I mentioned to Rick that the outcome was predictable, he wasn't interested in, on what basis was it predictable? And how it could have been avoided? And then in terms of the other products, I can't think of anything useful in teaching systems engineering. And I requested the systems engineering analysis supporting the selected choice of some of these products. And when I asked for bookcase and art Pisa had no idea what I was talking about. So he doesn't understand systems engineering at all. If you look at Incosi's organization structure, it's not suited to a professional society. It's more suited to a social club. The, the role of the president is an external role. A president should be somebody who can pick up the phone and talk to people at the top levels of government and organization. Somebody with name recognition. Advancing through president-elect and president is a social club, not a professional society. The version of systems engineering focuses on layer two process, which is inherently flawed ignores most of the real-world activities in layer 3, 
and people are busy trying to invent the tools and techniques. For example, MBSE is reinventing operation research and returning to the A paradigm. And there's a dichotomy on system of systems and complex systems. NCOSI and the USDOD generally can't handle them, but the real world can and does. Open your eyes, look around. Membership churns. People join and many don't renew. They don't find any value in it. The bylaws are a joke. They're violated by the officers when Cecilia Haskins, Terrier, and Bill Miller violated the bylaws, and this was reported to the board of directors, Alan Harding wrote that he would put a note to the effect in their confidential personnel files. That's a joke. And then those violations were then supported by the board of directors. And you know something? Violating the bylaws is punishable by a fine in the state of California, where Incosi is incorporated, if it's brought to the attention of, um, the, of California government. The publications, both the symposia and the journal, are not worth reading. There's nothing much new of value. That's because there's no qualification for the reviewers, and there's no objective criteria for the acceptance of manuscripts. Take a look at the symposium peer reviews. As I said, no objection selection, no objective selection criteria for peer reviews. Paper rejection is so it's based on subjective criteria. I disagree with the author. I don't like the author. I don't understand the context of the paper. There are a few typographical errors in it. Well, this is a draft paper. It's incomplete. Well, guess what? It's supposed to be a draft paper. And these comments are based, of 20, on, based on 20 years of being on the receiving end of reviewer comments. And paper acceptance is based on reviewer ignorance on prior publications, papers, grammar, and style. And then there's a self-appointed committee that overrides the scores of the reviewers based on their personal agenda. And no wonder what it, what's published does not advance the state of the discipline. It produces a reinvention of materials already published. There's a narrow view of systems engineering. Nothing makes an impact in the outside world. Little if any value in the published papers and some of the material is just, I'll use the word wrong. It teaches things that are incorrect. And so here's a picture of the symposium peer review process. I found this cartoon on the internet, but couldn't find any place to attribute it. Let's take a look at the symposium in Seattle. If you look at the attendance, the, some of the technical thought leaders were, ab leaders were absent. And they were, some of them were absent in 2014 as well. And when I asked them via email, the response was they find no value in attending when the employer doesn't fund the participation. Well, wait a minute, how soon is it going to be until the employer finds out that there's no value in attending? Look at one of the opening keynotes in 2015. It took in Cozy 25 years to figure out the importance of a systems approach. As I said, the technical program is nothing new. It's tackling problems that were solved between 1960 and 2000. And it's similar to previous years. I've been watching it in previous years, and it's been tackling old problems. But last year was the worst it's ever been. And there's a lack of systems thinking. And one example is breakfasts. The breakfasts are high fat and high sugar. Well, you've got an aging membership who are restricted in what they eat. A lot of them are not supposed to eat fat and cut down on their sugar. So what kind of breakfast does Incosi give? And look at the banquet. We'll cover that on the next slide. Get into the banquet. Well, you think about boarding 600 people, one bus at a time, four to eight minutes to board a bus, 54 people maximum on a bus, a little bit of queuing theory, 
do a back of the envelope calculation and you can figure out how long that would take and how long it did take. But then look at the photograph. You can see all the buses are lined up and they're waiting. One bus goes out, the next bus moves on, people board it, so on. Well, wait a minute. You got all the people there, you got all the buses there, board them in parallel. And you move them out a lot faster. No, I, nobody thought of that. And then getting back to the hotel from the banquet. The first bus was scheduled for 60 minutes after the dinner ended. Give you a chance to talk to other people and look around. Well, wait a minute. Some of us had jet lagged, that we're dead tired. We just want to go back to the room and assume horizontal polarization. And in effect, the first bus left at 45 minutes because the bus filled up. And so they were, it wasn't just me. Look at the leadership. It's the standard pattern of leadership for an organization. There are few motivated real workers. It's generally a minority of the membership. And you can find some steep status rather than do work. Some are content to be seen but don't contribute. And it's the Peter principle in action. People are in positions above their level of competence. And they're mostly ignorant, at least in terms of the technical knowledge and dealing with volunteers and other cultures. They don't, the Americans particularly, don't realize that other cultures do things differently. And you treat volunteers very differently to the way you treat employees that report to you. Yet nobody seems to be doing the V&V, &V, QC or mentoring or whatever one you talk about. The leadership is mediocre, at least the academics. These are the academics and they're supposed to be providing leadership and guidance in the academic side of systems engineering. Yet most of them are at the low level of the academic promotion ladder. Well, being at the low level of the academic promotion ladder isn't bad, but when somebody's been there for 10 or 15 years and hasn't been promoted, that tells you something about that person's competence. There's a focus on startups rather than accomplishments. You don't have to accomplish anything, you just have to start something. That's what you get a reward for. And most achievement seems to be a meeting took place. Well, in the context of meetings, we can talk about working groups. There are two types, special interest groups and working groups. The special interest groups just talk, talk, and talk. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if members want it. But when you go into a special interest group meeting at an international workshop or an international symposium, and you watch what they're talking about, and then you come back six months later, and it's like 10 minutes have passed. They're talking about the same thing. But if that's what the members want, that's fine. Then you go into the working groups, they're holding meetings and they're producing useless products. For example, the requirements working group is producing a book on how to write requirements. Well, got news for you, that was done in the 1970s. And the competency working group is producing a competency model based on a failed earlier NDIA attempt. At least the people are having fun. And you see the standard pattern of volunteer characteristics, the generic perspective. The group is doing what the leader wants to do. But whether it has any value to INCOSI or not, nobody's checking and nobody is looking to see does this, this contribute to Vision 2025? And so the question is, are the working groups join, worth joining? Well, it depends. If you want to talk, 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 that's fine. I thought about writing, for years now, I've thought about writing a fellows piece on why you should join a working group. But then I realized that my first piece of advice would be to read up on the topic. Because one of the benefits of joining a working group is you get some experience in an area of systems engineering that you're not employed in. And that broadens you as a person. But if you read up on that topic, you will end up knowing more than the leader and a number, quite a few, 
if not all, other members of the working group. And then you'll start asking questions and you'll get a reputation for being challenging and confrontational. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So where's the value in Inkosi? Well, after 25 years, there's no significant contribution to the discipline of systems engineering. So Inkosi, the acronym is an international club organized for systems engineers. It provides you with international social networking opportunities, chapter meetings, special interest groups, the international workshop, and the international symposium. So join Inkosi and have fun, but don't expect any serious contribution or learning about systems engineering. Questions and comments? Oh, I'm happy to field them. And my perceptions of systems engineering that led me to this and the holistic thinking perspectives are described in my books. If you want a paper copy, feel free to buy them. If you'd like a PDF version, send me an email that tells me you've listened to this presentation and got down to slide 12, and I'll send you a printable PDF version of one or both of the books if you request them. Thank you for listening.